Tēnā koe hau, uh, kia ora tātou, he karakia timatanga. Hello everyone, here's a short karakia to bring us together in this space this afternoon. Kia hora te marino, kia whakapapa paunamu tomoana, he huarahi ma tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, arahu mai, tātou i a tātou katoa. Huie, tai ki e. Uh, ane te whakamarama, e hoa here's what was just said. May peace be widespread, may the sea be like greenstone, a pathway for us all this day. Let us show respect for each other, for one another, bind us all together. Tēnā koutou katoa. Ka pai te patina, thank you. Welcome back to Unscripted, the second week, uh, and a slightly... No, a vastly different program this week than last week. This week is more about the the group that's here talking rather than the panelists. Um, before I kick off, I'm going to introduce Vanessa. Vanessa has just come back to New Zealand and is based down in, in uh, Nelson. And uh, Vanessa Smith, and we are very, very excited to have Vanessa with us. Uh, she was here momentarily last week. Uh, but Vanessa's just recovering from COVID. So, Erica, can you shine the light on Vanessa? And Vanessa, just take us through what you've recorded so far. So, Vanessa is a facilitator and has got a wonderful gift of being able to take conversations and turn them into art. Vanessa. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I've, I've been drawing... Uh, the conversation from last week and this week, I just capture the essence of what it is to sort of bring you all in on the page, literally, from last week. So I'll bring you a bit closer because there's lots of things to see in it. Um, we started with a discombobulating heart, which seemed to, um, you know, stretch out across the page. Um, it was about learning through our uh, challenges, finding ways through, and, and conflict, and working with discord in, in, hang on, that's down here, working with discord in new ways. Um, I think the word unmake became a theme, really, and there was a lot of sort of um, breaking, cracking open, and um, an invitation into an uncomfortable space where we can grow in. Um, and like all these pictures, they sort of become something as you draw them, and so do conversations. So, you know, um, becoming a student of difficult conversations was some of the ingredients of last week, and um, finding the way back into relationship and connectivity to bring a wisdom, recovering and dealing with the pain at the heart, developing an in tuneness with each other. And the nature and nature and the end of him. So, um, someone also talked about making love systemic and sincere. So, I'm still working on it. I'm really looking forward to what comes through in the conversation today. And um, I hope you're all feeling present and ready. Thank you very much. Thanks, Vanessa, and welcome, welcome back to New Zealand, and wonderful to have your talents in the country. So, this week uh, we want to hear your voices more. Um, we have got apologies from uh, a number of people. COVID is pretty uh, uh, rampant right now. Uh, and we've got apologies from three of our panellists uh, because of COVID, and Che is in hospital having some major surgery now. Uh, we're going to go quickly into breakout rooms of just two or three now. And what um, we are asking the people that were here last week is that what reflections have you had over the last week since this conversation? And for those who are here for the first time, why are you here? What brought you into the room today? Okay, so those are the questions. And Erica's going to drop us into groups of two or three very quickly. And so those are the questions. Reflections from last week and uh, for the first time is what brought you here this week. The other thing, when we come back, I'm going to go to the panellists 
and we're going to hear their reflections. Uh, and then uh, I've got some reflections from Che, Anya and Fanoina, who have written in uh, their thoughts. And then we, you're going to have a choice of four breakout rooms and you get to choose where you want to go. And how we've got to those is that Hannah, Erica and I worked on the stilling, the chat that was, that was created last week and looking at the four different uh, themes coming through from that. Okay. And that, that, those chats have determined uh, the four different topics that we're looking at today. So you get to choose, and Erica will show you where to do, and each of those rooms is going to have a facilitator. You're going to have 35 minutes in those rooms, so you've got plenty of time to really dig into topics that, um, that you get to choose. Okay? So for now, and if there's any questions uh, at this, please just put your hand up and we'll deal with those first. Um, and if there are not, then otherwise I'm going to ask Erica to do her thing. Okay, Manda, there's a question. Good morning. Good afternoon, Manda. Hi, sorry, I turned up a few minutes late. I went to the wrong room. But I forgive, um, I forgive you. I forgive you. Uh, so could you repeat the four themes? The four themes. Erica, do you want to just pop them up on the chat there? Uh, should we um, move into the first breakout room so we don't confuse everyone? and have that discussion yeah, no. and then I'll pop them. Yeah, cool. This is why Erica is in control of that. So Amanda, we'll, we'll put those up when we come back. So the first breakout rooms are just going to be random with twos or threes. Okay, and so, um, and then you get the topics when you when you come back in, okay? Okay. Okay, just um, uh, so there's no confusion as to what's going on. Good call, Erica. Thank you. Any other questions? Cool. Okay. All right. Here we go. Breakout rooms. Welcome back. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed the conversation with Hannah and John. Thank you. Okay. So Erica's putting up the themes of the different topics for the breakout rooms. Okay. Uh, and you get to choose which one you go into, okay? Uh, there's four themes there. Okay, so before I go to the panelists, I'm just going to uh, the apologies from Anya. Anya sent through this wonderful reading from Howard Zinn, an American historian in World War II vet. From Anya, to be hopeful in bad times is not just uh, foolish, American, oh, I've pointed it and it's, I can't read it. I've pointed half a page. Okay, I'm going to leave that and come back to it. Um, classic. Okay, so from Che, Che's message was that um, his death threats that he was receiving had been around the Treaty of Waitangi and that Māori had been getting too much of a say in running the country. And um, the message he wanted to portray is that Honouring the treaty, there is nothing to be fearful of that, and that all that Māori want is equity. And the key thing there is that sometimes that needs a bit more effort in some places than others. Um, and he just wanted to stress that, as far as he's concerned, Māori do not want to take over the country. They just want equity. Um, far more you know, was similar, actually, and that she put in right afterwards that what she regretted at the conversation last week was that she hadn't emphasised enough that she thought for us to love our country was to honour the treaty and to put that uh, at the forefront. Uh, and she regretted not voicing that um, that last week. So now I'm going to go to the panellists and I'm going to try and find the proper reading of that, uh, of that work from Howardson. So I'm going to go to the panellists and I'm going to kick off with Marg about your reflections, Marg, over the last week since we last met. Yeah, thanks, Harv. Um, I loved it and I'm glad you mentioned Shay and 
far more Ina and um, Anya because um, each of them made an impact on me as did Finn of course um, but and uh, Felicity but I, in particular it was Anya's um, whole point about how can we unmake ourselves or unlearn a lot of what it is um, that predominates in our society today. So I also, she made a point about sharing our um, power with young people as the architects of our future. And she also spoke about how do we attend to the humanity that's dying as well to the uh, humanity that's emerging. And Peter and um, Marianne and our group have just been talking about the whole nature of CQ being, being something that evolves. So that um, the regeneration and the ecosystem is, sits behind what I'm about to say. So what I took away from a lot of that was how can we, how can we make a difference? How can we move from, um, as Finn would say, from individualism to the collective? How can we unlearn um, a lot of that which divides us and, and causes that polarization. And I think I came and talked to you, Harv, and said that I found myself reflecting on a wonderful phrase from early in my life, which was, how do we move from hostility to hospitality? And um, I think that that movement involves the generation of a, of, of a space. So we, as if we're in a hostile situation, we can be the ones that become the space creators. We may not have something even to say, but this comes back to one of the predominant themes last week too, which was listening. How do we creatively listen to somebody that's absolutely on the complete end of the, <laughs> the spectrum to us? How do we respect them when everything in our, in our being is feeling um, aggressively challenged and, and even spat on at times? How, and so I came back again to a model of um, that I was given as a child, which I'm terribly grateful to my father, who was a very liberal thinker. And that is that, that in society, we have like a pyramid, a triangle. And on the bottom of the triangle are those people who, um, who perhaps live a lot of their life out of fears. And they rely on external authority. So in a religious, you know, they... They have to have somebody telling them what to do. They live by the rules that others have created. And um, that's, that's the tremendous group think that can happen as a result. But with more education and more opportunity to think critically through, I think I come back to the education system has a role here. We come to think and internalize things and become more independent, which then leads to us becoming the ability to be in, interdependent and then ultimately, the top of this pyramid are what I call the magicians. And I, it's not just me, other people have referred to them as that. And these are the people who can reinvent themselves over again in different societies. And I had an experience when I traveled to the Middle East as part of my life and worked there. And, and I'll share with you that I, I, had, I was literally catapulted into an education reform situation with only two weeks notice. So I'm on a plane thinking how the heck do I enter this culture and I had literally one day to go to a, a library to understand I had no time to read the Quran or whatever and I shot in there <laughs> and I started off on all these books and then I thought oh no I can't read those so I went to the children's section and there were a whole lot of yeah, names um, you know my name is Imran and, and I go to the mosque every Friday I thought that'll do me and I started reading and I began from that position of of an openness and not long after I got there I was in a very high powered position in the supreme education con, uh, um, center in Doha and I found myself with two um, men and, and normally the women and men were separated and not long after Ahmed Zwadi who was my colleague said Mrs Margaret what do you think of us and I said oh I think you're a bunch of terrorists <laughs> But you know, we're having, I got to know him a little bit and I said, no, no, not really. And then I said, actually, that is how you've been presented to me in my country because Arafat was the only, only Arab that I'd actually seen. And so I went back to that childish notion and how much I had to learn. There was so much more that we had in common. And so I, he shared with me the mosque and we were both praying for peace. And I realized that 
my husband said to me, you don't have to bring peace to the Middle East all on your own, darling, when I left. But that was my whole attitude. How do I, this one individual, you know, how could I make a difference? And it was to realize that when I opened myself up to listen and to not be from my um, little narrow thinking, that um, other people shared the similar human ways. So unlearning some of my ways and relearning theirs. So that movement I leave with you, um, hostility to hospitality requires a lot of imagination, a lot of innovation. Lovely, Mark, thank you. Thank you, fun. Amazing. Uh, something that I'm finding is that everything that settled for me last week is already being like kicked back up again and churned all through. Um, that model you just shared with us, Margaret, was amazing. I'm going to be thinking about that for a little while, I think. Um, but largely what landed for me based off of last week was just the concept that there isn't a single answer to this question. Um, and so from that, where do we go? Uh, and I landed on a couple of things and um, had a great chat with Shelley about it. So sorry, Shelley, but you're going to be hearing all of this again. Um, the two big things I'm keen to explore today based on that conclusion is uh, based around what can we share uh, under the understanding that we're all going in, in different directions. Um, and I think that comes down to tools. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, that's a good t-shirt. Um, uh, tools. So tools are agnostic, you know, tools don't care what kind of goal you're trying to accomplish with them. Uh, and so regardless of what we're all trying to do, there are bound to be some tools that we can all um, pull resources towards um, and, and collectively use. Uh, and then common points. Um, is my thing mirrored? Can you read this properly? Yes. Okay, cool. In that case, I think I can get away with a quick cheeky whiteboard sesh. So like, for example, if one person's going here, another person's going here, another person's going here, they're all going in different directions, but they all still share some kind of common goal, some kind of outcome that they all want to see achieved. Um, and to that end, they don't necessarily need to focus on what differs between them, but, but what they share and what they can do together. Uh, and so those are two concepts that I'm quite keen to explore today. And also the community creativity and change. Always keen to explore those. Love it, Fran. That diagram is so simple, you know. And how often do we focus on the bits that were not the same, you know, and just and and think that's that's where we're at. Very. And the whiteboard session so spontaneous, fun, great skills, brother. Okay, Felicity. Well, it seems like we're all singing from the same song sheet, I would say, because um, Margaret's basically stolen thunder as in, and Finn a bit, except much better than me. <laughs> um, my reflections over the week have been both at a personal level and at a system level. Um, and from the sort of, you know, how did I feel about last week? Um, took a bit to get over myself because I was kind of new into this kind of environment with not a lot of, um, shall we say, help from Harv about except for, oh, we'll just say what's in your heart. <laughs> so I actually felt kind of different and other and Australian and businessy and, you know, kind of loud and or whatever. And, and I was triggered at various different times as well. So uh, that met, then set me into a spiral of being self-conscious and, you know, because I'm new to collective intelligence and thought, well, I should have said that and why did I say that? And, you know, I could have had been more thoughtful about this and, oh, my God, that's terrible. Um, and, you know, that's just people being people, isn't it, really? Because in every context, we're going to, it's in different contexts, we're all going to feel shitty and we're all going to feel you know what the hell are they talking about or you know sort of triggered or something but the thing so that sent me into okay let's let's just get a grip here and so I realized that I actually don't mind feeling uncomfortable or a bit like a numpty or something of that 
much anymore because I'm old enough to, you know, sort of, it's okay, really. I've been through it so many times and I've lived. So that's, that's good. Um, so, um, and it's a massively complex world and it's changing by the day and how the hell is anybody going to make any sense of it, except if you're from the New York Times and you have to feel, you have to, you know, feel, you know, um, competent or look competent. So the thing is that, you know, all of us feel like that. So we have to learn and, as you say, Finn, the tools, the skills to be able to just say, okay, that's fine. I feel uncomfortable. I feel triggered. Take a breath. What is it that I, what, what is somebody trying to say? Why are they saying that? Like, and be curious about it. Like, quite sometimes when somebody says something about Mr. Trump, no offence to anybody, I don't want to know what, how they manage to feel like that. But the thing is that that's what we, that's our work. We're here to learn how to listen to each other and hear, not just to listen to reload, as Jennifer Garvey-Gertberg would say, or listen in the mirror. It's to actually hear and see, as you said, Margaret, about um, your experience. And I know that I'm, I'm not here to be famous. I'm not even here to be just a happy person. I'm not here to be an expert. I'm here to be a bridge. That's what I'm learning to do for the rest of my life, is how do I bridge? How do I... How do I listen? How do I hear? And I still might not like it, but at least it'll, it's a way for me to learn, you know, learn something and for somebody else to learn something. And we're going to, as Harv often says, we're not going to do it right. But, you know, there's, there's, there's that. And I also then went to, okay, so what's happening at a system level? And it's really at systemic solutions are the only ones that are actually going to, to, um, you know, work really, and how do we do that? And so few of us have those skills, but we can learn these things, and um, we can. We have extraordinary giftedness both here and around the world, and it's if we can mobilise that, if we can unlearn stuff that we think we know and that we're good at, and all those sorts of things. No, we're not good at anything anymore. Quite honestly. <laughs> It's going to be intergenerational. It's going to be thinking together and listening together and reinventing power and all those sorts of things that feel really hard, but we can do that together somehow. That's my reflections. <laughs> you're on you're on mute, love. Oh, I was going to I just gonna say oh, back no. to you, Felicity. That's stunning. Um and and thank you for being so authentic in what you shared with us, because that just has put you into this place where you've just spoken so authentically again. It's just, that's magic. Oh, thank you, Margaret. So it was a little bit imperfect, though, Felicity. Was it? it? was a little bit good. Good. Oh, that's because I'm, I'm an Australian love, you know? I'm a bit imperfect. It was just, it was stunning. Um, I was asked uh, in my breakout room, what were the... What were the what were the uh, things that happened for me last week? And, and I'd actually forgotten this, and it came from a different conversation. But there was a wonderful comment about, say, the Trump supporters. What if they were right? Right? And it was the most liberating thought, right? What if they're right? And then what comes from that? And uh, it reminded me of a quote from John Cougar Mellencamp, who <clears throat> wrote a couple of days after the Twin Towers were knocked down. And he said, I know this is not going to be popular with people, but he said, man, we must have pissed somebody off. And I, I'll never forget that. It was a very, very brave thing for him to do at the height of all that, all that, uh, yeah, all that passion and angst. Now, Bettina, I'm going to hand over to Bettina because Bettina's going to read that Peace out from Howard Zinn, please. Uh, Kilda, no, I've just put it in the chat as well in case anyone's uh, interested. But here it is. To the hopeful in bad times, it's not just foolishly, to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It is based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty, but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many, 
where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act, and at least the possibility of sending the spinning top of a world into a different direction. And if we do act in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and how to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, is itself a marvellous victory. Howard's in. Thanks, Lakina. So, Erica, I'm going to pass over to you to give the team the instructions of what's next. But we, actually, before we do that, are there any, any um, responses, thoughts uh, from those panelists? I just personally wanted to say thank you because those authentic conversations where we challenge ourselves and step back and ask what triggers us are incredibly powerful and empowering of others to take that journey. Um, there's, there's a quote that uh, from, well, it was a phrase from Rob Campbell who is always very authentic to his self as a very seasoned director. But he said, we often conflate disagreement with conflict. And if something's not sitting well with us, we often go to silence or violence. And the question that I've been asking myself is how often have I been silent? When actually the scope is to actually speak into my truth, but to do so in a way that's respectful. He also made the point we owe it to everyone around us to speak up authentically our truth, but to also know that voices that may be raised in opposition are not doing so as the other or to contradict us. Simply it's because they are speaking out of their truth. So we need to listen and understand and be prepared to be utterly wrong. So that provocation around Trump's an interesting one because it's one that I challenging myself about as well and I suspect like everything it's not binary there's a spectrum in there. 100% Rosalie and, and I heard a professor from Harvard talk about 10 years ago and it was at the end of a it was the end of his, his speech and he said actually can I talk about what I really want to talk about and he talked about middle America and how their, their standard of living have been going down for so long and he said, at some point, this group is going to act. And he said, we will be taken by surprise. We won't anticipate it. And they are going to do something on this. And that's what happened. They voted Trump in. Right? And um, it was fascinating at the time. He was fascinated to see, he said, that they're a small group on the world stage, but they're very influential. And when they act, they're going to cause havoc. And you know it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating um, outcome. Okay, Erica, Rosalie, thank you for that. Erica, back to you. Tell us what we're going to do and how we do it. So I will quickly share my screen. There are four themes or four questions uh, that you can choose to join in terms of the discussions. And so when I open up the breakout room function, uh, you can choose um, the four. The, the four different options. Um, so please um, have a look at what is on the screen now um, and also suggest that you pull out your phone um, if you can't scribble this down quickly enough um, and take a, uh, just a photo of what's on the screen to help you navigate through the questions. So Mark is going to be doing with number one, Citizen of Planet Earth, okay. Uh, Finn, no. Hannah is going with room two. Okay. And this came from Che, less American culture. So, what do we want more of? Um, Finn is talking about imagining the future. Uh, and then Felicity is room four. Right? How do I question the assumptions respectfully? Okay. So, those are the four options, and you can drop into any of those. Okay. So you can choose whatever you want. Cool. All right. I will open How do we, Melissa. Okay, Melissa. we've got a raise hand from Melissa Jenner. 
Hey guys, just a quick question. I know it might bugger up the whole system, but are we able to move rooms or is that just not, because I'm interested in a couple, or is that just not, not possible? Understandable. We, talk, we talked about that and I said, Melissa Jenner will be a pain in the ass if they want to move between rooms, right? And Where's mine? <laughs> form. We prefer not to, Melissa, but, okay. we're, but we're not going to also stop you. Um, so we talked about this before and Hannah talked about moving around. We were just concerned it was going to cause cause too much disruption. But okay. at the end of the day, um, nobody's ever been able to tell you what to do, Melissa, so why don't we start now, right? I'm prepared to be told what to do by you, Harv. Ah, that's new. Okay. So um, how do we do this? How do we do this, Erica? So I will open the rooms in a second. Uh, please read the window and everything that's, that pops up. Um, and then it navigates you into the right room once you've chosen um, the topic you'd like to opt into. So shall we have a go? Okay, any questions? Any questions? Because at this point, normally I'm panicking, going, I'm the only one that doesn't know what's going on. Or if what I would say is that if you end up in the room that you didn't want to go to accidentally, you can just leave that room and you'll come back and be able to choose again. So don't worry. And we've got 30 minutes in this discussion, huh? Yeah, look, look and, and we'll check it. I'll be um, floating around and just seeing how it's going. but. We want to give time, and you've got the four panellists uh, and Hannah facilitating, and their job is not to talk, their job is to draw the conversation out, okay? Cool. All right, here we go. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you for letting me join in some of them. One of them didn't want me to, that's all right. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to the facilitators. I'm going to kick off with room one, Marg. And just a, a, a distilling the conversation would be fabulous, please. Is Mark on? I have. Okay, Mark, could you just distill your conversation, please? No, actually, stop. I'm going to go to Felicity because Felicity's going oh, to the top. Oh. You told me that before. Oh, Felicity, I'm so sorry. You go. Well, we had we had a brilliant oh, we had a brilliant conversation, and I, and it was like it felt like we'd we'd had a two and a half minute, you know, sort of time, um, and we could have gone on for a very very long time. So that's that's very exciting. And yes, it was about the assumptions, respectively, respectfully, and it was you know the stuff that kind of came out was, you know, we we're, we're busy. What what is it we have to make we we need to make time to be still and to hear what's there and to, to be curious and to listen and to have conversations with people. And that's really hard. And part of what a really wonderful insight, which I'm sure is not new at all, but, but you know, that, that the stuff that drives us to be busy are the, are the hurts that we haven't dealt with. And, you know, the wall that's happening is around those, those patterns of behaviour built on hurt, you know, sometimes for sort of for centuries, but for us in our lives, we have not dealt with them. And, you know, that until we do that, we'll keep being triggered. But, you know, lovely, I think Tina kept on telling us how much she didn't, didn't know and didn't, it was Tina, stop it. it. You're wonderful. And, you know, being able to ask questions and to just to, explore and to be the big thing is to be aware and to actually notice what you notice so and not not notice not to fix but to just to notice and be aware so over to everybody else um lovely conversation that i really really want to continue being still dealing with a hurt notice what you notice yeah face our own trauma and be able to to do to just move move through it and that we were, and actually Vanessa said something wonderful about, you know, she felt like there was no renewal and no discovery in her life. And, you know, that feeling was, was so bad to actually generate the questions and the, just, you know, that pathway, go on a different pathway. It's been lovely, lovely to be with you. I'm sorry. I have well, listen, you know what I love? Looking at your energy right now. What energy? What? 
Let's <laughs> 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 You know what I'm loving right now is your energy. Right. Nice. Is that, that's good. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Harv. Good thing. It's a good thing. Just seeing you. Oh, poof. <laughs> it's because I put the eyebrow thing on. No, don't do that's that. What you do. Yeah, that's you what you can do on Zoom. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. I really want to hear the rest of this conversation, but I do have to go. So have a great rest of the, the time and I'll catch up hopefully. Well, I say thank you. Well done. Thank you. It's been lovely being here. Thanks, everyone, for your generosity of listening and, and giving. Bye. Okay. Mark. Come in, Mark. Well, big topic here. Um, we were lucky that there were only three of us, which was fantastic. And um, in particular, Tanya was able to open up being really a citizen of planet Earth, probably more than um uh, wendy or myself and having lived in so many countries and um calling home is only where she and her husband and her two-year-old daughter are at ever, any one time and aotearoa is what they've chosen right now however we got she made a really great point that when she was young it was all about travel 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 and we needed to go and experience what it was like to be a citizen of another country on the planet earth but more our discussion came around to the fact that actually it wasn't actually about that, about the environment or about the particular culture. It was about our shared humanity. And um, she shared, she reminded us of Joe Cox, that wonderful MP who was tragically um, murdered in Britain, who in her maiden speech said that there, we have more in common than that which divides us. So that's probably our first thing, Harv, that we want to share that as a citizen of planet Earth, we have more in common than that which divides us. And when we behave as human beings, as loving, generous, spirited human beings, we overcome those things that would divide us. And I cited the women in Ukraine the other day, who those grandmothers who took aside the young Russian soldiers who've been conscripted to the front line, who don't know what the hell they're doing, they haven't been properly trained, they're terrified, they're starving. And these women fed them and gave them their cell phones to ring their mothers back in Russia. I mean, this, these are the things that we celebrate um, in times of absolute catastrophe. And the fact is that we are galvanized, galvanized often by catastrophe. So floods, earthquakes, all these terrible things, the shooting, the mosque shootings, we come together as quick as that. You know, the, the team of five million, our prime minister can call us that, but the minute things settle down and we come back into consuming and, 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 and looking after self and God knows what else, boom, that just goes out the door. So how do we galvanize our humanity and we we came through to things like being curious um, which we've said before um, questioning unlearning our assumptions um, being uh, yes i think i mentioned curiosity is is the fundamental attitude that we need to have um, and then we finished up on the intergenerational trauma that that um, we see around the world everywhere that where we have inequality, the greater that inequality, the more we have this problem of being citizen, true citizens of planet Earth. The more we, we don't deal with um, climate change, which is certainly dealing to us. We put all our exploitations ahead of everything else. If we can mine that and we can plunder the Earth here and we're paying the price for it. And there's some brilliant stuff around today that i'd love to share with you all more on on this because i'm married to a um environmental engineer who for 30 years has been screaming about climate change but um that aside we came back to the fundamental giving birth to children and how we treat the children how we love our children is a mark mandela said this of our humanity of our sense of community and look at us just think about the way that countries are set up what they govern how they go where is the children the children get exploited abused um so on so how do we how do we deal with systemic change and finn i'm dying to pick your brains on this because um 
I, 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 I defy myself. I'm absolutely, <laughs> we, we, can, we can say, oh, bureaucracy is just, we'll never get through bureaucracy. We can't have any more policies. We can't wait for governments to do it. And I'm saying, yes, we bloody well can. One decent human being can change the world. Mandela, you can do it. Jacinda whacked out those A47s immediately after the mosque shooting. I'm not going to believe that we're going to be, you know, bossed around by, by bureaucracy. I think there are ways through it. And the urgency of that has to come. And it probably will come as it's done before from the voice of a child. So this is why I'm all for young people. They are we need to fuel them with the energy to take leadership in this way. We oldies need to get the hell out of it. We've buggered up this place. And I want, I want to see, this is why I'm right behind you, Finn, everybody your age and younger. My seven-year-old grandson can teach me things. Oh, I love it, You should have been in here one day. I'm fired up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Finn, do you want to go now, Finn? Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't. Sorry, no, Finn. No, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that challenge. Uh, Mark, you are an incredibly inspiring speaker. That's just outrageous. Um, well, my group, unfortunately, went off piste almost immediately, as my group would call it. Um, so our question was, how do we uh, get better at imagining the future? And how do we get there? Uh, we pretty much right away concluded that it's getting harder and harder and harder to uh, predict the future um, because things aren't moving in a linear fashion. They're moving exponentially. Uh, and so that leaves us with less and less and less context in the past that we can use to um, consider what the future might be. Uh, but with all of that, we, we did come up with a couple of um, juicy insights, I think. Um, and dozens and dozens of, of great tidbits as well. Um, the, the two things that I think that play really well together that came out of it was um, one thing that, that Richard said, which is it's not about imagining the future, it's about understanding that the best is yet to come. Um, so it's almost just abandoning that notion entirely of um, trying to um, chase something futile, which is predicting what, what can come. Um, and instead just embracing that you know, the certainty that if you want something amazing to come, it will. Um, and the, the, the best is yet to come. Um, and then the, the second piece that I think plays quite well with that is something uh, Marianne said, which is certainty, certainty that the, the only way that you can predict the future accurately is to limit the scope to what you can control. Um, and she said something very moving about how uh, that has been a concept that supported her a lot through raising her own children. Um, and it's, it's something that she takes great comfort in. Um, so I think those two concepts of, of um, kind of zooming in on what is within your, your control um, and then just uh, focusing on the fact that the best is yet to come, um, not only are they comforting, I think they're probably the, the closest that we can get to accurately predicting the future. Um, we also had some great chats about uh, randomness and, and how that plays a part in everything. Um, Richard is very keen on randomness um, and just the concepts of, of um, uh, community and, and, and individualism and how that all plays a role as well, because uh, that is a very common theme that we've seen across all of these chats. Finn, are you able to quantify this randomness thing? What, what do you mean by that, Harv? Well, I mean, mate, that's pretty fucking loose. <laughs> uh, I, could, I could call Richard to the stand. No, oh, Richard to the stand, please. It doesn't make sense. You're asking someone to be pr precise about randomness. Is that how what I understood, Half? Yeah. Well, that's kind of a that kind of doesn't follow to my mind. So, Richard, could you just 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 frame it up a bit more for me because I I haven't quite grasped it. Well, well, uh, share was a, what you shared with us, Richard. There was a bit a bit of history about kind of linear, uh, and then we talked about exponential. I challenged exponential, which was just linear, where you could kind of bend the curve. Randomness is if you've no friggin' idea. You've no bloody idea. You know, I start my day, I've got a piece of paper here that says what I was going to do today. It's completely redundant. It was probably redundant within the first hour of 
today and it's actually been a most enjoyable day. If I look back at what I'd planned to do, if I did that, it'd be friggin' boring. So the concept of randomness is actually, um, yeah, it's just that. Yeah, start off every day like it's going to be a big bloody adventure <laughs> and you'll be surprised. Um, well, at least I am. And I keep having to say to myself, I almost sound as if I'm kind of wise. I keep having to remind myself, oh my goodness, right, let's just create <laughs> this is a random day. Treat it as such, and I'm sure good things will come. So does that kind of explain? There was a bit of history. Yeah, that's better. And this is why you're such a failed accountant, right? Well, it is, unless you're talking about the creative variety of accountant. But there's no, you know, unfortunately, those have a rather pejorative um, kind of... I just love that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Hannah. Hmm. Where to begin? Um... So Rosalie and Hannah and myself, with a contribution from you as well, have um, had what I would describe as a really profound conversation. Um, we began with, uh, you know, Americanization. What does that even mean to us anyway? And I think we were keen to acknowledge that, um, as Rosalie put it, there's nothing homogenous about America. <laughs> Um, and also there's a lot that we love about America and uh, about Americans as well. So um, we were kind of keen to be clear that we weren't necessarily clear on what Americanization meant, but that there was perhaps an element of the individual versus collective um, that we were trying to explore. Um, Rosalie was talking about the, the primacy and the importance of being people of treaty and treaty partners. And that set us off on a bit of a discussion about what if as citizens, we gave ourselves the identity as partners, first and foremost, what does it be, mean to be a good partner? If, you know, we, we might understand what that is in our personal lives, but what if we um, comprehended that, um, our culture was fundamentally part, fundamentally partnership was what it was all about. Um, and maybe that's something that we have that nobody else has anywhere else in the world. Um, yeah, so that was one place that we went to. Um, and then we got into what, what does that mean to, to us as Pākehā or as in my case anyway, newcomers to this, this country. Um, to talk talk in those terms um yeah it went quite deep was there anything you wanted to add rosalie i feel like i've not done a great job of summarizing a, a really rich conversation there no you've done you've done a really beautiful um piece and i think the piece that when we talked i, I loved the partnership the the concept of partnership has been sort of foundational for us and it was the idea that we're a multicultural society but we are built on a bicultural foundation. And it is the partnership that will actually build us towards the future because that's really at the heart of how we can also address some of the, the, the gap and the inequalities that we have as a, as a nation. Um, the point that Harv made, I think that's probably also worth bringing out is that we, we discussed the way that there would be different views. There would be those who would regard this as enormously threatening and would want to retreat into conserving because frankly, they, they, they're very happy with the status quo or they would even like to go back to where um, uh, sort of their, their, their privilege or their own sense of well-being and identity was uh, uh, felt safer than perhaps it does today. So we sort of recognised that that was a piece. Mm -hmm. So then became the discussion about how do we position this as, or how do we ensure that actually there's so much opportunity with this and that it's actually something that is blessing. Um, it is not compliance and it is not a loss. It's actually something that's generative and wins for us. Beautifully put, thank you. Thanks, Rosalie. Thanks, Hannah. Um, I'm going to open up to anybody else that wants to. We've got 20 minutes left. I'm just going to open up for 10 minutes before we start closing out. Any comments or any thoughts that weren't represented by the, by the facilitators? Just chuck your hand up or just speak. So 
please. Roger Lee. I just I just wanted to say a huge thank you. Um, I've I've just come off a panel session about productivity and how do we move the dial on productivity and it was you know economics and frontier firms and you know r d and gdp and all of those wonderful wonderful time you know entirely inexplicable things and the question that i had throughout that was are we having are we actually having the right conversations here are we really really having and it's been so lovely last monday and today has actually felt I've, I've gained more richness, more reflective insight, and also more uh, felt empowered, particularly by the sort of vulnerability and the openness um, to, to, to do more and to step out more. So um, I just wanted to say thank you, Harv, and to everybody, to the amazing facilitators and every participant for, for joining in, because these are powerful conversations uh, that we need to have for the future. Thank you, Rosalie. I'm going to go to Catherine Graham. I don't know Catherine Graham, but I dropped into a conversation that Catherine was having and it sounded pretty bloody animated. Catherine, do you want to add anything here, please? You're on mute, sorry, Catherine. Here we go. How's that? <laughs> I'm not sure which part of the um, the discussion you popped into, Harv, but um, I was really feeling um, energised by our conversation because I think one of the things that was brought up is that um, uh, maybe some of us have stopped discovering, and I kind of felt like that resonated with me. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I have stopped discovering, and I and I was kind of thinking in my mind, when did that happen, and why did that happen? And uh, then I sort of flipped back into the conversation that's taking place in front of me, and it's just a um, really energizing and exciting dialogue that's really rich, and I'm really just enjoying it. So I jumped in last week and. Um, um, I wasn't, I watched the video today because I wasn't able to make it. And then today uh, we start having this conversation about, um, uh, we were talking about um, perhaps the busyness of life has, um, how that's affecting us and our ability to really get to what matters, you know, to get to the to the real, um, I think it was Vanessa was saying, you know, we need to get to the heart of things. But we we are living such busy lives, and we we are we are bombarded. Um, I, my um, background is in media, and um, you know, three decades working in corporate world of media, and I understand that we are being bombarded from every direction in so many ways, and it's really difficult to actually pick up on the messages that really, I guess, matter to get to the point of, we can all see where we're going, we can all see what's happening by what, what we're seeing, but how do, we, how do we filter that down? How do we really get to filtering that down to what's really important and, and what we're going to focus on, as someone else just said before, that, you know, we, we perhaps need to just filter it down to what we can control and what we can make a difference with. Um, and, and I guess that's the big question for us. What, what is that and how does that look, what does that look like? And, and that's why I think this, um, these conversations are so important to just open the mind up and um, let it be blown away by all of these ideas and thoughts and, and to discover, I think, is, is what I'm really enjoying about all of this. Thank you, Vanessa. Yeah, I just love that, um, Catherine. Um, we talked to you for hours. Our group was amazing. Um, and I just wanted to add, um, I, I, Black Lives Matter, I, and I was in the Netherlands, I, I just couldn't take what I was experiencing anymore. The adversity was so intense in my system. 
and I painted and I painted this picture and it was, it was the comment really was this need for something else, this need for something new beyond what we already know and to step into this new field of, yeah, of awareness and of curiosity. It's like, wow, where are we? What was that? Like a kid again, like being born again or something. I'm not sure what the analogy would be, but this, that, 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 that creativity through the adversity, like don't step back from the adversity, step into the adversity and allow it to inform you of what to do next. Listen to it. Um, thank you. I would like to just say thank you as well. Um, I jumped into these two sessions um, because uh, I follow you have on LinkedIn and I was like, oh, this looks really interesting. And Marg, um, I've known Marg for a long time and I thought if she's part of it, I'm going to enjoy whatever she has to say because she's one of those kinds of people. And I'm, I'm, and I work with Catherine. So um, I'm exactly the same, feel the same as Kathy in that it's, it's, I felt like it was time to have these discussions and get outside of my own head. I think um, the last two years have become so challenging that we do get so swept up in a whole lot of crap that really doesn't matter. And that really asking those questions of ourselves, but what does tr what truly, truly matters? And I think connection and community at the heart of it is what really, really matters. And um, the, I had great chats with Margaret and um, Tanya before about the, um, the ability to change policy or just what you can do in yourself. And in yourself is get involved in your community, reach out to your neighbours. Um, you know, the, I love um, Finn's t-shirt because it is that. It's community, creativity, creating things, connecting with each other. Um, I think that we've lost that in the last couple of, of years. I mean, probably more than that. It's, it was already happening. Social media has can be a great tool, but it can also create insular little bubbles of algorithms and you know, not being able to see the rest of the world. So I think this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate that. Melissa. Oh, um, thanks, Hav. I just, my question that I put in the, um, in the chat was really, I feel like, I think you do this really well at Collective Intelligence Hub um, on behalf of the brighter group. I feel like we have to change the way we're communicating. I feel like we're very routine and pattern based as humans. And I'm kind of interested in, um, I'm not an expert in natural language processing or anything like that, but I'm interested in how do we shake up how we're communicating with each other, maybe create a new lexicon, a new language, a new, a new way that's okay to challenge each other. We were having a conversation in our room with Leanne about you know, divergence and how we're all trying to collaborate all the time. We're all trying to be nice. And, you know, I think it was um, Keith who was saying, you know, he loves it when people like unravel him. And that certainly was my experience with collective intelligence. It really unraveled me. And so I think how might we as a group be the leaders in a new way of communicating that's not just pattern based and not keeping us in the past. I'm just really interested in that as an idea, because I feel like every time I go on Zooms, every time I'm in meetings, I'm expected to perform in a certain way. And I think that holds us back. Um, so it's just a question for the group and I don't know whether that fits with everything we've been talking about, but there needs to be a breakthrough. And I'm wondering if language is a way to help with that as a, mo as a mode or a method. Don't know. <laughs> just gonna drop that out there. <laughs> well, that's, that was, you know, it's, it's, um... It, it's it's interesting when with our work at collective intelligence we spend a lot of time having pretty upfront conversations and um, I was asked one of our directors the other day what it was like as was on the B Corp uh, conversation and Andrea's on our board and she said it's so different than any other board she sits on and Maid and Finn know this that we have. Uh, Profound conversations, we have tears, we have laughter. Mm. And sometimes those are five minutes apart. And um, it's something that then when you go out and see the conversations that people are having, they're sort of like these plastic conversations. Mm. Bouncing along and nobody's actually connecting. 
And uh, it makes me very sad uh, when I see that. Um, and it's interesting here watching this as a group of a group of um, strangers. You know, you don't know each other, but you've come together for this conversation. You've stepped up. And so if we can do it here, and as Mark says, <laughs> you know, this is something that, you know, we, it's, it is achievable, but it takes... Um, and, and one of the things I've been interested with collective intelligence is what is our currency? And our currency is trust. And you have to work really hard with trust. And we are developing and trying to develop this uh, creating the business around a rainforest and going, so in a rainforest, what is our water? What is the thing that, that gives us life? And it's trust, it's connection between people. Uh, and without that, the forest dies. And it's something that we're really interested in how to develop that more. We don't know. So Melissa, thank you. No, it's your lips are well on the well on the button. So this is um, this has been a, a, an idea that we've floated that's unscripted. We want to do this more. Um, we want to bring these other conversations and questions to life through the year, uh, open this up to whoever. We just happened to pick a time which was the worst of times and so then the best of times. Um, I'm going to pass back to Erica, Hannah, Bettina, to any other comments or thoughts from the team on how to wrap this up now. Erica. Karakoto. Um, as I was out here um, holding the space in the main room, I, I told Harv that I, I had FOMA. <laughs> So it was really nice to have this round of conversation and, and um, I guess for me to also reflect on this last week um, being involved. Um, and one of the, the key questions that we, we actually wanted to include in the breakout rooms, um, which we ended up deciding to, um, to leave at last, is this notion of um, how can we personally do better or be better as human beings um, and all of the discussions and, and, and um, themes that we've discussed about and how do we zoom in to, you know, that scope that we can control. So I don't know, I don't know what, what you would like to do, Hannah, in terms of facilitating how we capture and, and harvest this conversation, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll pass that on to you. Thanks, Erica. Um, I'm also mindful of, of what you said this morning um, in our pre-meeting. Because um, I think we'd originally began with this idea that the unscripted conversation would be a two part process, one where it was all about talking and one that was more about getting into action. And we were reflecting on that this morning and we were like, is that does that feel right? Or is that just sitting on a cultural norm that is biased towards action when actually a lot of us are feeling? a lot at the moment and you know a lot of the conversation has been around vulnerability and empathy and listening so um yeah my suggestion is that we do what we did last week for those of you that were here um, and those of you that weren't i will just explain the process is that um if this is okay with you harv um just give you a question um what will you do or how will you be differently as a result of being part of these unscripted conversations or of these sessions? Um, and the invitation is to, to have a think about that just for a moment. Um, and perhaps we could have the music back on for a little while just to have some reflection time. Write your answer in the chat, but don't press return. So just hold your thoughts, give yourself some time to compose the answer, and this is the question, I'll put it in the chat now. Um, I think Eric has already done it. Oh, there we go, somebody's, somebody's right there. Um, and uh, then just before we leave, we will we'll all press return together and we'll get this lovely cascade of thoughts and that's something that we can take away. Does that sound okay? And the emphasis I'd like to do is, is about is more do, being than doing. So, you know, we've been talking about being busy. And so let's, you know, what are, how are we going to be? How are we going to be in the world?
All right, so maybe just a minute to think about that. Compose your answers and then put your hands up. Done. the gallery view so I can only see the park. All right. If everybody's ready, let's uh, let's do it. Press return, see what everyone said. Just have a scroll back and have a look. And over to you, Harv, whenever you're ready. Oh, we've got some interesting stuff here. Finn, do you want to read through these? Because you're really quick and smart. Am I? Alrighty. Uh, let's see. We do have some amazing ones. Uh, Rosalie is very interested in mindset. And mindset, yeah, already disproved. Uh, your theory hard of being quick and smart. Step back to understand what triggers me. Acknowledge without judgment. Always, always bring gritty optimism. Love that term, Rosalie. Tina will consciously bring her whole self to all of her life. Wendy will be more present, especially in times of discomfort. I'm starting to see a bit of a theme here. I'll, um, I'll skim through. I don't know if we've got time to, to get to absolutely everyone. Uh, Tanya said she would stop worrying so much about bringing people along. Those who want to will be there. Nice. Richard said he's going to think about the concept of individualism versus community, but linking it with talk versus action. It's an interesting combination. I'm sure some good stuff's going to come out of that. Melissa said, I will actively seek out randomness in all caps. Go to my outer limits, the boundaries of what in the past was my normal, and be, once again in all caps, okay with what I find. Uh, Catherine will be brave and create a space to be still by inviting a group to start an unscripted conversation to continue this. Love the idea of carrying this conversation forward. Great thinking. Peter said, as an oldie, I have no desire to get out of it, i.e. answers for the future. As an oldie, I feel I can contribute powerfully, usefully, without being sure how. Let's carry on that conversation as well, Peter. That sounds correct. And finally, Margaret said that she would like to create time to think and time to write about what she thinks. Gold. Written gold. The key thing with this series, before I pass over to Bettina to finish with Kavik here, the key thing with this session is that um, we've done it uh, as a team, and we've got a team with a whole range of different skills, which I really enjoy. Uh, and uh, not one of us could have bought this light by ourselves. And with the with with a group of people that are working together, it's I'm not going to say it's been easy, but it's been durable, right? We've done it, and um, and. I was terrified about doing this, you know, first up, I thought, I wonder how it's going to go, stepping into the unknown. I don't write, we like Zoom, I can't, 
be with people. So I just like to thank the team so much uh, for helping out with this. It's been wonderful. Uh, there's been some great stuff here. I'm so looking forward to seeing what Vanessa comes up with uh, and love what I see so far. And really, uh, thank you so much for joining and, and being part of this. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Bettina. Kia ora anō tātou. Hei karakia whakakapi. Ka whakaerea te tapu. Kia wātia ai te ara. Kia tūru ki whakataha ai. Kia tūru ki whakataha ai. Haumi e, hui e, tai ki e. Restrictions are moved aside so the pathway is clear to return to everyday activities. Nā mihi mai oha kia tātou katoa. Thank you everyone. Thanks,